Welcome to this edition of Kevin's Garage, my ongoing journey as a novice to build my Factory 5 Roadster. So uh, what are we doing this week? Well, actually, I was in a little bit of a dilemma uh, for the next uh, couple of weeks because it's time to either fit the engine or start with the electrical harnesses. Now, as a novice, I think it's fair to say that both are a bit of a terrifying prospect. So I um, asked around, went to the Factory 5 forums, looked online and tried to get a consensus of opinion in terms of what do you do first. Um, now the Factory 5 manual actually recommends you do the harness first. When we went to the build school, we actually did it the other way around. We did the engine first. And I think it's fair to say there are great arguments in the forums to do it either way. Now, even though my engine is here, I decided to do the harness first, just because I wanted sort of the room around the car to get everything sort of in the right position. And then when I dropped the engine in, I could start to, start to connect it. So uh, as a novice, what's the most important thing? Well, clearly, uh, open up the boxes and see what you have. But I think the most important thing um, is to find this book. So this is the, uh, the chassis wiring harness. So really it contains everything that you need. Lots of great pictures. Read that first. That's certainly what, what I did. And then depending on what engine you have, there's also other supplements and other books to read as well. So I'm um, putting a, I've got a Holly uh, Sniper uh, 2 fuel injection system uh, on my uh, Blueprint uh, 302. That's already set up, but I needed to clearly take a look at that as well. Then what also you have in the kit is obviously all of the, the wiring harnesses. And I have to say that, and this we did on the build school as well, the labeling of these is excellent. They really are straightforward. You know what everything is. And the, 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 uh, the instructions take you through step by step as to what to put where. So I was really reassured by that. The only piece that's a little more complex is I've got another harness that comes with the Holly Sniper system. So uh, we'll work that out uh, later. But it is important as you read through the manual because there are a few uh, preparations that you need to make. What's also in the kit is things like the, um, the uh, aluminum plate that you can uh, use to put in the fuse box and a number of switches, including the, the starter switch and the, and the dead switch, etc., etc. But we'll look at all of those uh, as we move forward. All right, so without further ado, let's uh, make a start. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is actually to drill uh, three holes uh, into the firewall to enable you to actually pass the harnesses from uh, this side, obviously, which would be behind the dash, uh, into the uh, engine bay. So at uh, this distance here to the first point is uh, 14 and three quarter inches, then one and a half inches up, and then two and a half inches and two and a half inches, and that's the, the three holes. So again, all of this is in the manual, so I won't labor that point. So uh, obviously now just uh, let's just cut the first one uh, with a hole saw. nice and loud and made a bit of a mess so I think I'll save you the next two. Okay so we're going to use Kevin Cam to have a look to see how we did. So you can see those are the, uh, the three holes uh, in the firewall. So uh, once I uh, drilled those I just uh, tidied them up a little bit, a little bit of deburring just with a round file. So the next piece there was definitely a, uh, a couple of uh, key learnings. And so this is where my recommendation is maybe just a little different uh, from what the manual says. So what you're trying to do, let me come under here, is you're actually putting the fuse box uh, there. So there's the fuse box panel and you're putting it onto this sort of al uh, aluminum panel here. And these are just two uh, flashes. I'll talk more about those later. 
So what you have to do is actually, and what it recommends you do, is that you uh, take the, the, fu the fuse box and you attach it to the aluminum panel and you pass it through this area here. So you can see if you've already put in your steering column and you've already done your brake lines, you can see that's a little bit of a challenge. And that's exactly what um, I did. So what I had to do was to take off, take the fuse panel back off the aluminum panel. I had to then uh, undo the steering and just move it across a little bit. There is a little bit of give in it. And then you can just about, if you've taken the flashes off, get the panel through here and then push it down under the brake lines and it will go in. And then if you reattach the uh, aluminum panel then to the fuse box, and then you can just put it in between this, uh, this uh, the two inch um, part of the chassis and then this three quarter inch here. So I've just put three of the screws and that's the recommendation they have. Just put three of the screws in that come when you originally get your kit. So it actually went in okay. The other piece I had to change was if you look at this here, when you originally attach the pedal box, this is the attachment that attaches it to the frame. So it has to be here. So whether you have a washer on it or not, it clearly gets in the way of the edge of the aluminum panel. So I just trimmed that down a little so you would get a flush mounting. So that was that, that was a learning. So um, then you have, obviously there's a few instructions on the different wires. Um, so ones that stay inside the pedal box, you can see here, uh, you've got the front harness, because that's going to go out of this hole uh, here, if you can see this hole down here. Um, this is something you don't need, the hot rod, uh, the hot rod uh, flat connector, so we just need to tie that up against here later. What you do push down into the pedal box, if I can just find them, is the um, switches for both the, uh, the brake uh, and for the clutch safety switch, if you have that. And then this is also the, uh, the ground. So you just put those down there for now. And then there's also two little grounds here uh, that you're supposed to ground that come off these flashes. Just a quick note about the flashes. The flashes are not actually in the, the same box with the rest of the electrical supplies. They're in another box. Mine was actually in uh, box four. So uh, you may need to, uh, to hunt those out. All right, and the rest is just sort of hanging down around there until I uh, work out what to do next. So, all right, let's, uh, let's move on. Okay, so let's just talk about um, a couple of the materials that we used before we have a quick look on uh, Kevin Cam to see how we've got on uh, with installing the harnesses. Firstly, what I did with my harnesses is this ju is just some extra sort of electrical loom tape um, just adds, adds a little bit more protection from the elements and is a little bit more resistant to heat. So I put that on all of my um, uh, wiring harnesses. Then just a couple of attachments that you'll see, of course, the zip tie, uh, great uh, for lots of different things and you'll see that. We've also got this sort of zip tie attachment, which is quite nice. And you'll see that in a moment. You just put a rivet in there and that can fix directly to parts of the chassis. And then, of course, we've got the insulated clips that we've used uh, when installing uh, the brake lines earlier. So you'll see all of those as we uh, have a look. So I think overall it went uh, fairly well. So uh, let's have a quick look on uh, Kevin Cam and I'll take you through uh, each of the individual harnesses. OK, so let's talk through the harnesses. So. Um, if you're doing the main harness, you've put that in, um, as we've just discussed, comes through here. And the first part you need to feed into the engine is uh, through the right hand uh, hole that you just drilled in the, uh, in the firewall uh, was for the starter and the alternator. So that is uh, this cable here and then just leave them uh, in the uh, engine bay there. So you can see where it comes through. The firewall looks quite neat. Then the second one that you do that you connect is the rear harness. That's uh, this one uh, this one here, which goes out through the second hole. You can mix up these holes, but I just thought it made sense. And then the third one, I'm going to leave for anything for the uh, fuel injection lines. Just a quick comment on all of these connectors that you end up putting together. So it's pretty intuitive as to what goes where. My only caution is as a novice, don't 
push these in too hard. They all have like little pins inside and sometimes they get slightly out of alignment. So uh, just have a look at that. And if you need to uh, tease one or two into, uh, into the right position, you'll find them with any other electrical connectors, they just go together so much easier. So let's have a quick look as to um, where this goes. And you probably noticed that I've actually got, um, uh, you know, that's the, uh, the extra loom that I mentioned. So again, just a little bit of uh, protection. So that comes down. In fact, I'm gonna go around the other side to make this easier to see. So it comes down and then what you want to do is to keep it fairly tight uh, in the transmission tunnel. You can see I've just put three of the uh, permanent clips riveted in and obviously you're keeping that well away from any uh, heat sources or any moving parts. So then the back one that comes out um, and really what you're looking to do is to get this T uh, right about the middle here. Now, anything past the um, the, tra the transmission tunnel, tunnel, I've just put uh, temporary clips on. The reason why I've done that is because there's a number of things that I'll be doing to make adjustments. So the first thing is I've got the uh, battery box from uh, ffmetal.com. Uh, so it just makes it a little neater and that actually fits down into this space here. So I'm probably going to have to move this over a little bit to the right, which is fine. There's plenty of give um, in, the, uh, in the harness. So moving over to the right, to the passenger side, you come down this line, and these, this takes you to uh, the, get, the, the two connectors for the gas tank. Nice and simple for me because I've got a, um, a pump that fits uh, in the tank, so that's easy. Then coming down the other side, um, you'll see that goes straight to the, uh, the driver's tail light and then it splits again on the other side to the uh, passenger tail light and then this small line here goes up, um, comes to the middle across the arch there. You've got plenty of slack in that as well and that's for the light on the number plate. So the back line pretty straightforward but again my advice would be um, just use loose zip ties because again you have to fit the the trunk panels in here and if you're considering like I am like a drop trunk as well you need a little bit room here because you're going to take that well down another uh, five inches but we'll look at that at a future episode all right so let's go back to the uh, front and then talk about the um, the front harness so the front harness actually connects uh, here uh, on top um, of the, um, the the hydraulic clutch and the uh, and the brake uh, lines. Um, again, same thing with these connectors. Just take care with them. Next learning is that uh, this this line actually gets pushed through that hole there. So you're not pushing this through. You're putting the whole uh, of the line through. Um, so you connect it uh, down the sides. This is where I use those uh, new different plastic connects with the zip ties. I mean, I must be honest, probably a little bit of overkill, uh, but I think I was just excited to use something different. Anyway, um, next little point is you have to cut a little groove. There was one there uh, in the F panel, but mine just wasn't quite uh, big enough. And you obviously you're trying to keep uh, the, 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 uh, the wiring uh, below the level of that three quarter inch tube. So pretty straightforward comes down and then anything after this point I kept temporary again um, just because you're not quite sure how everything sort of configures so you've got the obviously the the driver's uh, lights um, and then you've got the uh, passenger uh, lights as well and then some attachment for the radiator in the middle so that's that's it pretty um, straightforward um, so what I haven't done yet is I haven't put in the um, wiring for the instrument panel. I'm going to do that later. I could attach that now and just leave it um, uh, behind the, the dash this side of the firewall. And I've not done anything with the fuel injection yet, primarily because I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, but that's a, that's a side, um, because I've not read through everything yet. I've just got the whole, I know that there's a whole number of uh, connections and number of options that Factory 5 offers. So I'm gonna wait until I've got the engine in place and then I can come back and uh, sort out what that needs from an electrical standpoint. All right, so there's one other little minor thing I just need to mention. Um, just go back into the uh, fuse box and hopefully you can see this. What I did do 
is I had to put a little ground in uh, here. Uh, as requested, I did attach my switches a little bit um, awkward, so my advice would be, uh, like I did in my, one of my last videos, I put the side panel on. Probably best not to put that panel on, um, but anyway, it, it worked out okay. And then you've got another little ground here, so just make sure that you grind away the powder coating so you've got a good metal on metal connection. All right, so I think that's it. Let's just uh, summarize and then we'll move forward. Okay, so that's it for uh, this episode of Kevin's Garage. One thing I did forget to mention is I did actually fit the inertia switch just as recommended in the manual, so just uh, to the right of where the, uh, the steering column is and that went in absolutely fine. So um, I think the first tip would be definitely make sure you spend time reading and re-reading uh, re the, uh, the chassis wiring uh, harness manual. Uh, lots of great tips in there. It's nicely laid out. It's all in colour, so it's pretty easy to follow. Clearly, there are a few pieces that I need to read up on, particularly as a novice, which is everything to do with the fuel injection system. So I'm uh, 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 using uh, a Sniper 2 system, so I've been uh, reading through those instructions. And again, I think it'll be uh, pretty straightforward uh, when I've got the engine in and I've got everything connected. So I think really it's just take your time, uh, nice and steady, uh, don't attach anything permanently until you've measured everything out and you're thinking about other things that you're putting in the car, like the discussion we had around the uh, battery box and if you have a drop trunk. Um, and also it's very easy that if anything's not permanent to obviously just make those changes and make those adjustments. So um, the grommets can be a little bit of a, a challenge sometimes to get in, um, particularly if it's cold. So make sure maybe if you're, if it's in a, even in a cold climate, you know, leave those overnight before sort of fiddling around. But basically everything fits and it's very well um, labeled so it should be pretty straightforward so certainly as a as a novice I didn't have too many challenges yet but that's probably a uh, famous last words all right so that's it uh, for this episode hopefully you're enjoying my novices uh, journey uh, next week it's the big one well actually it's almost the big one next week is uh, engine preparation there's quite a few things I need to do to the engine to prepare it for install so install will probably come uh, the week after that so if you're enjoying the uh, the process then please like and subscribe all right thanks a lot we'll uh, see you next time